Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to be putting in the Oracle uh, LED with halo lighting. Uh, this is part number 5769-001. And when you look on the back here, you'll see right here 5769 means that it's the black, which it is. It's all black trim and everything. Um, I couldn't find 5770. I actually went and looked. I didn't see anything anywhere. I don't know why, if, or if they're like, you know, discontinued or whatever, but um, I, I can't find them. And it would be kind of cool, I think, with the fact that my uh, grill has like that aluminum or stainless, I think it's, I think it's aluminum uh, grill, and I think this would have looked okay, actually, with it. Probably would have been a little too shiny because my grill's not very shiny. But nonetheless, this is what I found 5769 001, which means they have the white halo. And I'm going to be hooking that up to the pickup today, uh, putting that in there because I'm just excited to get those halos in there. Uh, that's the main reason why I'm going to do it, actually. Um, although I will admit at night, if I, I haven't drove it at night to pick up very much, and uh. But I, I, I'm going to say that those halogens are a little, you know, dingy. But I think the main problem really is the fact that my uh, windshield is sandblasted from years and years of being in the truck. And any kind of light glare outside or sunlight or, or darkness or anything. It really, uh, I just need a new windshield. Really is what I need. But the headlights will make a huge difference. But again, what I'm really after is the white halo look. Because then that means the white halos are on uh, when I'm driving at all times, even during the day. And really, there's no excuse for people not to see me coming down the road and pulling out in front of me. Or, you know, again, it's, it's, an, accent, it's an accent It's a, as far as like it looks, has a look to it. I like the way it looks and it just makes you more visible. I'm not trying to say, hey, look at me, look at my, look at me driving my cool truck. That's not what I'm after. What I'm after is just, I like the look of it. And I also like the safety aspect of it because I do, um, you know, as a driver myself, I see other cars with halos or even just daytime driving lights. I, I know to those cars, uh, easier and, 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 uh, you know, as in, like, I, I, like, they don't sneak up on me, I guess, so to speak, you know, like a gray car against the back cloudy sky and a, and a concrete street, right, kind of blends in. But if you've got halos on it, I mean, there's just no mistake, and there's a vehicle right there. So that, again, for me, it's more about the safety, but yes, it's also going to upgrade the lights, and they're going to be much brighter at night when I need to use them, which, again, is hardly ever, I, I don't, I haven't drove it at night much. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it just gonna make it look better. So, uh, this video is going to be pausing and going and pausing and going. So, uh, because I just don't have time to actually take this whole video and put it on the computer and then edit it all out professionally and all that, which I would love to do, but I just don't have the time for it. So I, I gotta make, you know, use of my time, uh, especially right now, very carefully because of how busy I am with everything, work and, and just, you know, a whole bunch of things that I got to do right now. And uh, so this is how this is going to go down. I would love to be able to professionally edit the videos like I did start with my Mustang a long time ago. Unfortunately, it's just it, it, too time consuming and uh, I have a lot of people waiting on me for some things. And I and but at the same time on my weekend, I, you know, deserve to spend a little time on my stuff. Right. Take a little break. This is how I'm going to do it. And to help you guys out in, you know, looking at how you can do this or you can see what this style is like or whatever, I'm going to put it out there for you. It's just that it's not going to be a, a super professional video. Okay, pausing it right now. Okay, here we are back at the truck now. And this is it right here. There is the original headlights, and they, well, I don't know if they're original, original, but they do say Wagner on them, so I kind of think that maybe they're not completely original, but just to give you an idea, pull them on, and that's what they look like.
So, wow, you can actually feel the heat of those babies right out here. So, I mean, you know, I got a good battery and, and whatnot. And uh, so there you go. That is the original look of these lights. Um, I kind of like the idea, <clears throat> honestly, of the original look like this. Uh, Oracle does make an original housing that has halos inside of them. And then you got to put an LED inside the back of them. Uh, but I decided to go with these just because I didn't want to deal with having to figure out which LED to go in it. Although I'm pretty sure Oracle will recommend one. And also I heard that the projector style uh, LED, the one that I have, were the better style for getting the light out there and having, you know... Uh, like a, a nice uh, edge so to speak because the last thing I want is I want a lot of people flashing their brights at me like I got uh, Too bright your headlights or whatever because I mean we can adjust them no doubt and I'll take this apart and kind of explain that but uh, I, I just want to I just want to be safe But yet I also want to not blind everybody else because I don't want them blinding me back Because um, these LEDs are the real deal uh, as far as brightness goes so this is the original um, we're gonna start here by the way I've, I've got some screws missing on that one over there I actually have uh, two screws missing I only have one screw holding that in so we're gonna have to find some replacements but you can see this one here is missing that screw uh, I got two screws here so I'll just take these off and take this off and we'll start going from there pausing now Okay, we're back already. Um, basically, what I did was I took out two screws. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that was all this side had. You can see this is this is the, I don't know what you want to call it, trim piece that goes around the headlight. A little bit dirty inside here in the bottom. I'm going to blow that out with compressed air. Um, there's my two screws right there. So I'll try. I got some stainless steel screws in here. I might actually brand new ones i'll probably just use them i don't know if these are stainless or not i have no idea but i'm going to probably use some new ones okay so they screw right into here and there little uh, screw tabs here and also down here screw into that one and you can see this one here holds uh the dirt and everything down there so that's why that probably gets a little rusty um right here and right here are your adjustments for aiming the headlights. So that's how you uh, aim headlights. I'm going to probably put a little bit of um, WD or some sort of oil on these things here, kind of loosen them up. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to need to aim them or not, but I probably will at some point. But for right now, my whole idea is just getting them out, these old things. And putting the new ones in so really all I got to do now is just take these loose right here and then that should allow this uh, ring to slip over and pop off and then this headlight should easily be able to come off at that point so that's what I'm gonna do now okay so here we go we got I basically loosened up these three screws right here and that allowed this beauty ring to I guess I call it a beauty ring or whatever, trim ring, to slide over and pop right off. Got the headlight out here. Uh, first problem that we have discovered is that we have a broken, um, we've got a broken connector here, and that's okay because I have replacements, and I'm going to actually put those replacements in uh, because I don't, I don't want to be using this, that's for sure. So now, really, the next thing is to find out if those headlights fit in here without actually having to trim all of this, which I hope not because this one here has a spring on it. I hope I don't have to trim that. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I mean, according to the Oracle website, um, the, the, the those, those uh, lights that I got were, I mean, jeeps are the thing right so like jeeps are definitely the thing that these these led headlights are advertised for mainly uh but a lot of people online are saying that they're pretty universal and they should fit because they should be basically the same as that right there but we're going to find out when i stick that over here if that's going to fit in here and if it does great if it doesn't well 
I got some trimming to do and this video might become a two-part video at that point so again here we go pausing again okay coming back real quick um, I went and got my air compressor here <clears throat> I blew this out I blew this out really well on the back there cleaned up a little bit and um, so again I haven't quite fit them yet but when I do uh, kind of swap this truck over to the new frame um, I'm going to definitely uh, paint all this stuff here this will all be done the right way but for now I just want to get them in and just you know use them for now uh, who knows maybe I might actually you know get a different set the next time around I don't know but for right now yeah I got to get this replaced here uh, and like I said try will fit those suckers and see if they fit okay we're back all right so good news bad news good news uh i got them in kind of bad news they don't fit uh perfectly so the trim rings are not tight okay so they're not really tight and i haven't even tightened these down yet by the way uh, there, it was a little difficult getting it in here because this thing doesn't center too well. And then, of course, you can see we got a, you know, there. It's all falling apart on me now. Um, let's see if I can catch this before it falls. Okay. Pulling it out here. Okay, now, so put the trim ring on. And you can see that it does not fit perfectly. And does it, it not only not fits perfectly, but uh, these don't fit either. Let's see if I can get this in here with one hand. Put the wire through. And I'm trying to do this all one handed so you can hear my set it down. Put the wire through. Okay, here we go. Coming back over here, so you can see that the aluminum housing here has those fins and everything. And that big old thick edge. Yeah. You can see here it, it's not fitting down inside there perfectly, so... I think you can see all that shit. There it is. Just not fitting inside this bucket absolutely perfectly. So at this point, and you can see I kept that plastic on there, so because that that is uh, polycarbonate plastic or whatever, which is good stuff, but it can stretch. So I'm trying to keep that from getting scratched from all the banging around, and hopefully I don't drop it. And if I do, that should help keep it from getting scratched but anyway um so here we are now at the situation where what do i do next and so at this point i'm pretty sure we got a part two video coming because i believe this whole bucket here is going to have to come out at this point and i need to figure out how i'm going to make all this work and uh, I think the biggest problem is these right here. Oops, sorry, there's my finger. These right here. I think these are the biggest problem, which probably is something that uh, on a Jeep situation, uh, you know, lines up with something. But these things right here for sure are the problem. I think I could actually fit inside here if I had all this stuff here gone um this wouldn't be so bad i think it would sit against that no problem but i don't these right here are obviously in the way i'm gonna see if i can pause this video figure it out a little bit further and if i have to now of course my warranty will go to hell but i might take and grind these off right here and um See if it'll fit inside there again. And then I actually did hear, uh, you know, people saying 
via and it wasn't just these by the way it wasn't just uh, Oracle but all the LED halogen lights or whatever out there I heard that they, they that some of these rings don't fit perfectly and people just take black electrical tape and they wrap around it and then they put this on there which would hide it pretty good because obviously this goes on and then this goes on over the top of that you know like so and that would kind of hide it you probably never would see it not really how you want to do it but i think that's going to be about the only choice you're going to have here so again i'm going to try to pause this video see if this camera is going to hold on and pause for a long time if it times out then i guess we're getting a part two video but um, i'm going to see what i can do to make this work to fit in here because i definitely don't want them falling out i don't want them rattling around and i definitely don't want them to where they like move you know and and the other thing too is that these here you know you want to get them you know lined up clocked properly and um which again i think is what a lot of this is all about when you put it in an actual jeep or something right and uh you don't you know and being how the that that trim piece is just a little bit loose i don't want it vibrating and starting to turn on me and all that kind of stuff so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put this camera on pause, plug it into the charger, see if it'll hang on on pause, and um, try to figure this out. And if I can get it figured out and the camera hung on uh, on pause, then I'll come back and we'll continue to move forward and I'll show you exactly what I did. If not, uh, this will be the end of this video. So I'll just cut it off right now as if it were. Like, subscribe, rumble, 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 and uh, come back because I'm always going to have more. But maybe I'll be back in just a minute, second. Okay, so amazingly, the camera ha has so far hung on. And I, as you can see, I got it plugged in here to keep it charging. Um, so, this is what I did. I got out my big old caliper here. And uh, I'm measuring across... Uh, from like right here to this edge right there all the way over to this edge right over here and I've done it in several places and what I'm coming up with is I'm coming up with six inches uh, 300 and 85 thousandths basically so just under 6.4 so Let's see, 3.75 is, I believe, 3 eighths of an inch, I think. Pretty sure it is. So 6 and 3 eighths of an inch. And then I take this outside and I put it inside that bucket, that steel bucket. And I mean, it is just a little tight. A little bit. It, it I mean, it's just not quite going to fit in there perfectly. However, uh, I have decided that uh, I'm going to take and grind this off, that off, that off. Uh, I'll leave this alone. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grind off those things right there and see what I can do. And then I also have decided that I might take a hammer to the outer edges of that just slightly and try to roll those things out. To get this thing to fit in there at least to where it'll center itself and it will sit uh, somewhere on here you know nice and square all the way around that's what I'm gonna try to do here uh, wish me luck again I'm gonna put the camera on hold hopefully this thing will hang on so you can kind of see the end result of it but that's what my plan is and uh, I'm gonna have to do that with both sides by the way so uh, but I am gonna leave this pad right here alone and that one and that one and that one i'm gonna leave that one alone and, and the main reason why i'm gonna leave those alone is because if you can take a look right here you can see that this kind of it raises up same height right here for quite a distance actually um from here to here so if i were to grind these little pads down then i'd have to grind this really long pad and i'm gonna just try to see if i can make it work by taking this stuff here down and uh, go from there that's what I'm going to try to do. So, uh, again, wish me luck. We'll see how this goes. And if it works out, great. If it doesn't, I mean, we're going to make them fit somehow. I'm trying to do as little modification on the truck as possible. 
uh, at least right now. But, you know, if I got to do a little bit more, I can do a little bit more. I, I'm trying to not grind on the truck. Uh, I don't mind kind of, you know, gently hammering and that kind of thing. I just don't want to grind or cut if I can at all prevent it. And I probably will be wrapping uh, electrical tape around the edges here. A couple layers or whatever to get that ring to fit on there more snug. And outside of that, I think, uh, I think this is going to work. Hopefully see you in just a second. All right, amazingly, the camera has held on, and I was able to do what I needed to do. First lesson, wear a glove, and even this glove is probably not what I should have. I should probably have a leather glove. I just uh, don't have any right now that I can find, uh, because that, owie, uh, luckily, it didn't go too deep. Uh, but basically, I was basically holding this down because I don't want to put it in a vise and crush it or crack it or scratch it. And I was holding it down on a soft surface out there, outside, where I'm doing this, and using this grinder right here. So, uh, got a, a grinding stone here, a thin cutting one, and I was just taking, and I had it on, and I was grinding it like this right here, okay? Just sticking it up there and just trying to gently put it down, but I got a little little uh, uh, overzealous and tried to do it a little faster and it slipped and it caught my thumb so I went and got a glove got that taken care of I'm gonna look around for a leather glove when I do the other side uh, by the way this does get kind of warm when you're doing this it does warm it up and if you have never ground aluminum with a grindstone before uh, this will start to clog up that was the other reason why this kind of happened uh, this was starting to clog up with aluminum because the aluminum material embeds itself in here and then it makes it to where it doesn't work very well and I was trying to force it and I, I should have known better I knew better and uh, I got an old frame out there sitting out there where I was kind of grinding near and I got some old I just got all kinds of just metal you know all over that frame that I'm going to end up pulling off anyway so I ended up just taking this and I ended up grinding it against that steel frame uh, parts and pieces and, of course, it rubs off or it cleans out the aluminum. I mean, it's obviously going to wear on your wheel, but that's the whole idea behind of a grinding wheel. But anyway, it will wear on the wheel a little bit and get rid of that aluminum and make it cut a lot easier. So, uh, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. Uh, you can see, yeah, this is where I slipped, I think, and got my thumb. But anyway, uh, for the most part, though, it looks decent. And from the front side, you're never going to see that. I did put this inside there, and it does fit. It actually did a pretty good job. So uh, I was, I thought, I was thinking at first I was going to grind these all the way down to this surface, but as you can see, really, all I need to do is just take it down to this surface right here. And uh, where's that one at? Oh, there it is. See, this is actually. Uh, it actually has a pad right there. So I just ground it all down to about that height right there. And I I, I took and put this thing over there. And, uh, oh, yeah, see, this one's with the same thing. See how this is raised right there all the way over there? So as long as I got it down to that surface there, uh, it sits nice and flat in there now. I'm not going to have to bang on that thing or anything. It actually, it actually fits. So... We're going to use this just like this. And like I said, it does get a little warm. It did warm up the housing. That was the other reason why I got a glove. This was starting to uh, warm up a little bit when I was doing that. So now, uh, once again, as I showed you before, as I showed you before, um, this ring goes on here. And it's a little loose. So my intention now is to actually wrap some electrical tape around there several times or... Or something, I don't know, maybe I can find something else. I, I might look around for some foam or something to put in there. Maybe some, I might have something uh, that I can put right there and make that to where it doesn't move around so much. In fact, you know what, I think I got some battery spacing foam that I use for RC cars. That might work even better and I can put like one, two, three or something like that since there's, you know, one at each one of these right here. And I'll bet you that'll tighten it up pretty good. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Anyway, I'll have to look around and see if I got some. And if I do, uh, cool. So, and this is why 
I keep that plastic on there because I just don't want to scratch that so far it's not doing it um, so I need to be careful with that because I don't want to scratch that up it's brand new um, all right so that's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna try to fit this uh, with some sort of foam or electrical tape or something to get that uh, snug then once I get that done the next thing I'll do is go out there and I'll replace that uh, broken headlight plug and then we can start putting this one in and we can start on the other side and we will do the same thing and then uh, I'll actually I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this so hang on all right I'm back again and I want to show you what I did I basically took this uh, exacto blade and I was using the back side here now this again this is for my own personal satisfaction this will do, have nothing to do with performance I'm sure but I was basically uh, getting rid of all these sharp uh, edges that I created when I was grinding just kind of sticking this in there and scraping it out that kind of thing getting rid of all those sharp edges and then I took a juicy sharpie here basically and uh, colored it black and you can see the difference here this is without and this is with the sharpie so when you actually look at it it doesn't look quite so bad right so that's the reason why I did it uh, again for my own personal glory I guess uh, it will do nothing like I could literally put it in like this you'll never see it you'll never know it won't rust but I'm just doing this for my own I guess you know, just, just for me, because I'm kind of that way, I guess. All right, just thought I'd show you that. Pausing again. Okay, coming back. Now you can see the final product here. After I blackened everything with that Sharpie, I guess looks better. Nobody's going to care but me. But, it again, just for my own personal thing. All right, so now, uh, replacing that broken um, H4 switch basically is going to be this thing right here um it's pilot brand 9003 high temperature headlight socket uh made in china of course i i i think i was ordering some stuff for my 71 mustang here right there um you know like fasteners and that kind of stuff and i think i saw this really 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 cheap well come to find out it is really really cheap as a matter of fact you can smell uh this black it's like asphalt rubber i mean it it it's it smells you take it out of the box you can smell it um i got some nice ones where are they at they're right here i got some uh painless wiring ones and i was actually going to use these i decided not to and here's why my 65 i am going to rewire that thing when i move over uh that 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 body over to the other frame when i get all the powertrain and everything worked out over there so this i am just going to permanently tie into that old wiring harness and i will take that out and you know hopefully that wiring harness will come out nicely and uh, i can sell it to somebody who wants the original harness uh, if they really desire to have a, a 65 original harness some people are like that um, but me I don't care because I have a 22 uh, circuit universal speedway motors harness that I'm going to put in there because I'm going to have it fuel injected overdrive all that other shit so uh, I'll wait to use those either on the Mustang or on my 65 when I swap it over uh, in the meantime these right here are going to work I'm just going to permanently make these a part of uh, that uh, 65 right now. And, uh, oh, that's the other thing. That, the other reason why, uh, you know, these are obviously cheap, uh, that smell I told you about. But these wires are, I mean, maybe 16 gauge? I don't know. They're pretty, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty small. But these things are only supposed to draw like 2.5 amps when at full power is what they say and on high beam and everything so with that being said i guess i'm not too worried about that which is why i would use that over there in fact when i go to actually uh, rewire the whole thing i'm actually going to have a relay coming straight from the battery for the low beam and another relay coming straight from the battery for the high beam and i'll be using 12 14 gauge wiring over 
to these lights and they're going to get maximum uh, voltage I mean like there will be no excuse but again because we're just we're just putting this thing together we want to fix that one broken uh, H4 harness we'll just go ahead and put these cheap ones in there and when I get rid of that harness these will go with that harness and they will have served their purpose basically okay so now that's what I'm going to go do we're going to go out there and I'm going to tie this into the one side and then uh and then, yeah, then I got to figure out what I'm going to use right here to tighten this up, up, up around this thing. And then once I get all that, I should be starting to install the driver's side. And then it's over to the passenger side. All right, back again. I found this in my RC uh, stash. I used to do a lot of RC racing back in the day. And anyway, uh, this foam, uh, sticky side foam used to come in a lot of RC vehicles for the sake of, you know, keeping your batteries from rubbing against the chassis and, and just all kinds of reason. And I've kept a lot of it over the years, as you can see here. Um, you know, that I always, I probably keep more stuff than I should, but guess what? When you need it, you need it, right? So I just stuck it right here, as you can see, and it's already pretty tight. So I'm probably going to put one right here and one right over here. And uh, I think two pieces is all I'm going to need to make that sucker uh, tighten up pretty good. And uh, that, that should do it. Just put two pieces on there and be done. And uh, that'll take care of that rattling problem. So uh, I'll show you, of course, the finished product when we're all done. But that's what I plan on using is that uh, has a self-adhesive. You know, you just peel this off there. I'll obviously cut this, make it fit nicely, and uh, that'll... That'll take, and being how it's foam, it uh, it won't rattle, for sure. Uh, it, and it'll be a lot, in my opinion, a lot better than I've heard people use electrical tape. You're going to have to wrap it around several times to get that thing. Uh, I mean, it, it, nobody's going to know that it's not perfectly centered. So, this will work good. Okay, here we are back. Um, hang on a second. There we go. I don't know why that stupid thing keeps working. But anyway, all right. So I put the uh, ring on and I ended up using more than I thought. Uh, this is, again, a, like a sticky side foam that I used to use for RC and battery packs and bodies and that kind of stuff. And it is about an eighth of an eighth of an inch thick or so. And I, I was just going to use two. Because I thought it would be more than enough. And it turned out that I ended up using six. So I spaced it. I basically put one right next to each tab. And then, uh, so that makes three. And then I put one right in the middle of those two tabs. And uh, it fits real well now. Fits really good. And in my opinion, this is going to be a lot better than um, what I heard about everybody doing electrical tape wise right there and right there it looks nice fits really good uh, the only thing you're gonna have to do is obviously we've got to clock this right when we go to put this in there so that's the thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to get this thing uh, clocked perfectly so that when I put it in there because I don't think I'm gonna be able to actually turn this once I get I mean because this is this is snug now um, and I won't be able to turn this so I'm probably going to have to get that thing clocked in there really good. You know, take this off, look at it, maybe maybe mark it or something, get it slipped over, and then put it up there and test it. And, it, and I'm going to have to get it clocked just right. But the good news is that, that that's very snug now. Uh, it shouldn't rattle at all. Um, and uh, definitely, you know, I, it'll, it'll be in the outdoors, but it's not going to be in direct sunlight. So that's good. These things can get wet. It's not going to hurt them. I really think we got it fixed for good at this point. And if it doesn't work out, these things are easy to just peel back off. Uh, they're not really going to fall off because of the fact they got a little pressure against them holding it down. So, perfect. So, yeah, I've got it all ground down. Uh, got them covered up with the Sharpie marker, which is no big deal, really. Put the foam there. These things fit really nice now. Again, go out there and replace this H4 plug and then uh, actually put it in excited to get it going pause
Okay, moving on to the next step. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but when you uh, leave your camera on hold, your phone kind of heats up. I got a Samsung phone, but it's not dangerous or anything, but just letting you know. Um, so anyway, here's what I got. I got these H4 plugs all butt connected. I'm going to do this. Um, normally, I, I would always solder. I would always solder. But again, my pickup usually doesn't drive at night. Also, I'm changing the uh, wiring harness later down the road. So I just want to get this done quicker. Um, but again, normally I would solder this up. But for me, this is good enough. However, I'm going a little above and, be, uh, above and beyond. Uh, so I stripped it back and, you know, twisted it up really good. And then I dip my wires in dielectric grease. And I get them very greasy. When I pull it out, there's just like a bunch of grease around it. And then I stab them inside here and uh, crimp them down using the correct crimper and then I even go so far as to put them with this right here and crimp them again and then I actually jerk on them really pretty firmly to make sure they are not coming off and these things are, are set pretty solid and uh, I'll do the same thing I'll go over there to the pickup I'll cut those things off and I will dip them in this really thick stick them inside here and crimp them up and uh, I don't know if I'll actually wrap tape around it I might do that actually now that I think about it maybe I'll do that and then that'll be good enough for me as far as because again that wiring harness will be coming out within the next uh, hopefully two or three years but that's the plan um, there we go uh, pausing again okay moving on to the next step this is uh, the H4 plug is put in the 65 uh, wiring harness here shows uh, a black wire a green wire with I believe a black stripe so I hooked that up to green and also a uh, what appears to be a red with a black stripe I hooked up that that to the red and then I actually you know did check it out to make sure that it matched up with you know the the way it went on to the H4 which you know you can clearly see here uh, you can see the red right there in the center the black over to one side the green over to the other side I did check that out and it it and it appears to be correct um, I don't know uh, the problem is I don't have a high beam indicator in here so I can't really tell if I'm on high beam or not um, I mean, there is a light in the dash for it, but it never comes on. So, honestly, I don't know if if I'm on high beam or if I'm on low beam. I'm going to have to figure this out, but uh, I may have done that incorrectly. Or we'll have to see. But anyway, um, I'm hoping it's right. I'll do that, then I'll wrap it up in electrical tape, and we'll move on next up. Okay, coming back. I got the first one installed. I don't have the halos hooked up yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get that one set in there first. And then once I do that, I'll wire the halo circuit circuit all at one time because it'll be on both of them. But uh, I'm I'm impressed. I mean, I'm they they're, they're pretty they're pretty cool. Um, so I had I had the uh, the the other ones in over there, the, you know, the old one in that one there, and I put this one in and I turned them on, and in my garage, I mean, it it made a huge difference. Now the only thing that kind of confused me is that because I know that this and this and this are on for the low, and then all of them are on for the bright, but the one thing that kind of confused me is how when I turned on the bright inside the garage, I noticed that the um, like how high the light was was the same and it got brighter down low so I don't I don't understand that maybe there's just something I got to do to point these things but um, you know again uh, it, it is a night and day difference as far as brightness I'll tell you that um, but yeah it, it was impressive so I think I got some pointing and adjusting to do but for the most part this thing is is pretty much ready um, and I can't wait to see the halos. That's going to be awesome. And as you can see, I take the plastic off now. I, would, I don't feel like I'm going to be scratching them anymore. So, or at least, you know, not because I'm dropping it and working on it. But, I mean, you know, 
it is what it is okay so but these are these are these are awesome yeah these are these are really nice i can't wait to see the halos this is gonna look good uh i'm actually and again i was thinking that the chrome one would look good in here and it probably would uh, but these are actually impressive i'm i'm actually it, it blends really good with this black dark area right here i think um looks really good and i and i will obviously uh, show you what they look like when they're all done but like i said for right now this is this is pretty cool this is really cool stay tuned okay so here we are this is the second one uh still got the plastic on it got it all ground down as you can see use my uh sharpie to blacken it up and make it you know look better uh by the way uh you can see how long the video is right now which is it looks like about 41 minutes long um and i probably spent about 10 minutes you know goofing around with marking these up making them look black again or whatever i did go to the bathroom i did go get some water uh so you know i'm about two two and a half hours in right now uh and you know and that that includes removing the old headlights cleaning everything with the air compressor wiping things out finding new screws for everything uh you know just all that stuff that i'm doing uh, i'm gonna say i'm gonna probably gonna land at about three hours by the time i get the halo circuit wired in so to kind of give you an idea it's gonna take you you know three to four hours uh, especially if you you know don't have the tools like i got the grinder it's ready to go um you know all of that stuff I'm, I'm, i mean i got as you can see all the electrical connectors and crimpers and tools and i'm ready to rock and roll and i've got some experience too so just to give you an idea how long it's going to take you to swap these over uh that kind of gives you a good idea but it's looking good so far i'll show you the results coming up I just wanted to show you my uh, repair here's the h4 connector right there and as you remember I had those uh, crimp connectors on there and I buried them with uh, dielectric grease literally lots of goop stick those wires inside there pinch them up really good and I wrapped it up with electrical tape uh, double layer and that is ready I will then now take and fill this up with dielectric grease this whole thing just fill it all up and um, install the headlight plug it in and we're getting close okay here we are um, you can kind of see they're working that is low beam well, let me switch over to high beam get high beam Now you can see it's all on. And I mean, I'm actually kind of impressed with the uh, with the dead eye look. I call it the dead eye look because it just looks like a dead computer, dead robot, something like that until you light it up, of course. But when they're when they're sitting there, they just look black and dead and, you know, but anyway, um, yeah no they look good they're definitely a lot brighter i'm not going to show you my garage at the mess uh but yeah it's lighting up the garage way better um so now last step is uh hooking up the halo i'll show you that okay here we are back again boy this is taking a little bit but uh here's the halo wires right here so these plug into some waterproof sockets that they have they've got an o-ring and it's uh, splined on one side so it can only go in there one way uh, i've basically installed some uh, grounding lugs that i'm going to screw into an old ground area and i'm going to add some star watchers so it gives it some bite and i'm a big fan of these Sermos uh, anderson power pole connectors because uh with this crimper everything goes really fast and they're very secure and these are silver plated so they are very very corrosion resistant and very conductive and as always lots of uh, dielectric grease on every single wire and these here i actually uh dabbed a little bit of uh, as you can see some solder right there so these are these are 
these are not coming apart. I'm actually doing a pretty good job on these right here to make sure that they're never going to rot, rust, corrode, or fall apart. So got that, and uh, let's go out to the truck here. So here at the truck, how am I going to get the, the halos to operate? Well, I want the halos to operate pretty much any time that the car or the truck is running. So uh, what I have is, if this is my main relay right here that actually uh, activates these two, uh, well, all three, but I'm not using that one right now, for my entire stereo system and whatnot. And I've got it wired in to where when I turn the ignition key on, it fires this baby up and then locks it all in. And so now the stereo is going, etc. Um, you know, and obviously the vehicle's running, so on and so forth, all right? But uh, whenever I would stop at the gas station, I had a problem of I'd turn the key off and my radio would go out. And then, of course, you know, I wanted to continue listening to music or something like that, or, and I didn't want to have to Bluetooth back up, etc. So what I did was is I actually put in an override switch right here. This override switch, when you flip that, it actually powers the uh, backside of that relay uh, right here, right there. So I tie it into this, basically. And so whenever I turn the key to the on position, it will activate all this and power this. And if I do that uh, bypass switch, it will power this. So basically, if I have the bypass switch on, these halos are going to be on. And that's fine because they don't use a whole lot of power and they look cool and uh it kind of gives me a reminder like if my uh if my phone goes you know dead uh, as far as like the song ends or whatever and it's just sitting there and i might walk away from this thing and if i look back at it i can see that hey oh i left that switch on so that's kind of why i'm doing it that way because again i want those halos on as much as possible as far as i'm concerned so that's what i'm doing there I will now take and plug into this, run a wire over here, uh, plug into those uh, wires that I just made up because they go, let's see here, they go right here, there we go. So you can see it's got an o-ring there and then you just twist this on there. I'll put dielectric grease on there of course to make sure that that's all slippery and uh, sealed up really good and then I just pulled that ground right there that's the old ground and I'll put that one uh, back on it but again I'll, I'll kind of brush them up and put some star washers in there and uh, ground it and I'll do the same thing over here let's see where's that ground at uh, it's right here somewhere came over to I had it a minute ago Probably looking right at it and I can't even see it. Everything's all black. Oh, there it is, right there. Right there. I'm going to actually take that screw and turn it around and put it back through this side is what I'm going to end up doing. So that way they're both the same. Okay, we're getting close. We're about ready to have halos. Hang on. We're almost there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. Um, before I go out there and show you the results, I want you to see that this is what's left of the kit. Got the instructions. There was a sticker. I've already taken it out. There was these, uh, you know, the spades. What else? These little splice connectors, you know, to put it into your wiring or whatever. I didn't use any of that. And you got these connectors here, which take you to the H4, to the H13, which is probably for the Jeep application. Otherwise, this is an empty box with styrofoam. So that's pretty much what's left in this particular application installing these oracle 5769-001 into a 65 f100 now let's go check out the results okay here's kind of the moment you've all been waiting for so you wanted to know how i turned on the halos uh, i kind of explained to you how i've got this circuit right here that comes on with that override switch in there and the ignition switch so that right there actually powers this right here and I got it all round up over to here and right to there. And then I stay tied it all the way over to here and hooked it up to there. And I got a bunch of dielectric grease inside there. So should be set, should be good. Now, here's the front. 
when it's all done. Looks pretty nice. Uh, the only thing, um, well, also, I changed these over to stainless steel screws. I had some stainless steel screws in here because I'm going to be putting my Mustang together. So this thing, these uh, brackets have, the trim pieces now have all the screws that they're supposed to have in them. And they're nice and tight and snug. Uh, I was just about to say, the only thing that I don't like is that, believe it or not, I was kind of impressed that these things here can be turned. If I grab and hold of this and I push on it hard enough and really get a good grip, um, I can kind of still move them side to, you know, clocking them left to right, um, even with all those foams in there. So if it becomes a problem, which I don't think it will, I don't think it'll vibrate and start, you know, turning or whatever, but if it does, I'm going to just line that whole thing with that foam uh, because that foam seems to compress really well and I'll bet if I do the whole thing it'll probably work better but anyway I put like six little foam squares in there all the way around and again it's it's pretty good but if I really really try hard I can kind of do it and I found that out by uh, tightening this ring here on there and I just saw that this one's a little crooked and I grabbed and I, j I tried to and I got it to move it took a lot of effort but I, I think it's going to be okay all right so now the moment you've all been waiting for um, I'm not going to use the ignition switch I'm just going to turn my override switch on which is that one right there and it's green it's firing up my radio and there we go And there it is. So that is really cool. Um, I got white halos. And you know, um, you know, you, you you look on YouTube to you know see how people do this stuff and how they did it, so on and so forth. Um, but I, I got to tell you, right now, I'm looking through the camera here, and this is not at all. Uh, impressive through the camera and when you're actually standing here looking at it for real that it's really impressive there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of wow it, it, it looks really good it really does um, my stereo picked up you can probably hear it in there maybe right now but anyway I'm gonna turn it down here in a second but yeah sitting here and standing here and looking at it this looks really amazing very bright exactly what I was looking for uh, let's go turn some lights on and I'm gonna turn that stereo down Okay, now we'll pull that out And let's see what I got Okay, so I got the brights on right now because I got every single one of them on and The halo is still on which it's going to do that because that's a separate circuit and then of course I can turn it down to the low beams. Wish on that dimmer switch. I need to get my uh, my indicator light in the dash working again. It used to work when I first got this thing, and then it just it didn't take very long, and it quit on me. So now I got low beams, and then of course I can turn it off. And I've been messing with this. Well, the video now says. Uh, 53 minutes but my uh my voltage is still above 12.2 volts so that's pretty impressive you know it, it hasn't been i mean i've been turning them on and testing them and all that kind of stuff you know the whole time so but yeah this is awesome so yeah no i gotta i gotta do ams oil inventory and i'm gonna take this now charge up that battery a little bit and obviously show it off a bit i guess but yeah i gotta go do some work now I just wanted to get this done today so I can get this stuff off my bench. But here you go, guys. If you're looking to put in the Oracle uh, 5769, I believe it was, dash 001, 001, meaning the white ring. They have the amber and all those other ones. Look them up. Um, I, I really would honestly like to have an amber turn signal ring as well. Um, I think there is that option, but I, I, I was a little bit confused, so I just... I just went the safe way and I just ended up buying just the white rings and the reason why I don't want to get in fact I wouldn't mind uh, getting green I was really really wanting to do it actually but the thing is uh, I don't know if I get in trouble with the law as long as you got white facing forward or amber facing forward you the, the law shouldn't touch you 
because those are the actual color lights that are, you know, actually facing forward by law. So you should be good with this. Uh, and that's why I chose white because white would mean that it is a headlight. Um, I could have gone amber, um, but again, I chose to go with uh, with the white because my pickup is white too. It has the white color to it. So that's the other, that's the main reason why I went with the white. Um, but uh, if I could have had an amber turn signal option, I would have. And I know that there's others out there that say that you can change the colors however you want, etc. Uh, they're a lot more expensive, and I just didn't want to go with that kind of price, at least not right now. Also, um, I wasn't exactly, I, again, the even the Oracle site wasn't quite clear on how it worked, and I wasn't impressed with that. So I'm a little disappointed with that, but at the same time, I'm very happy with these lights. These are awesome. As you saw, I had to grind them down a little bit to get them to fit, but it, it happened. It worked, and uh, we got it all set. So uh, for the 1965 or 66 style-ish, you know, type uh, install for the Oracles, this is this is the way you're going to have to do it. So uh, like, subscribe, rumble, 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 and uh, come back for more. I'm going to have more for you. All right, guys. Thanks. See ya.